crackdown on the media have been dispersed in the last few hours in Istanbul. We saw it live on air for a second day in a row now. A crowd gathered outside the HQ of an opposition newspaper that was taken over by the government on Friday. Police used tear gas to disperse the people. As I say, our correspondent was covering the protest when that tear gas was unleashed. She went off air temporarily then. She was also a hit, caught up in it. This is the moment when it happened. Uh-uh. The first class. <laughs> I'm here in a corner of a hairdresser salon where everybody is just coughing and <laughs> asthma sprays are being passed around. A lot of the women here, and with a lot of women, a lot of women are crying. <laughs> well, Paula at the time was broadcasting on Periscope when she was tear gassed. Just to let you know, too, you can follow that platform. The link is uh, on your screens now. We'll alert you as and when uh, streaming pictures come in. Great new service from us. But meantime, let's remind ourselves of recent history. On Friday, police also dispersed a protest outside Zaman's uh, HQ as well. Officers then raided newspapers, uh, offices and fired tear gas and water cannon at protesters just hours after a court ruling put the publication under government control. Protesters today told us they think Turkey wants to silence the independent media. There is a um, silencing movement here and we want to be silenced. We don't want to be silenced. And we are here to support the freedom idea in Turkey, not just for Zaman, for all the people of Turkey. I'm here to support my newspaper, which I've been reading for more than 20 years. It was always impartial and wrote the truth. It was not against Turkey or Turkish national interests. But unfortunately, last night, police dispersed the people who'd gathered here only to support their newspaper and very angry. Over the years, Zaman had covered the country's alleged links to Islamic State's oil trade and also reported on cooperation between Turkish border officers with ISIL fighters. And it followed, too, the stories of opposition MPs that accused Ankara of playing a part in Syrian chemical attacks. In the meantime, new bosses have now been appointed to run the news group. And one of them's an open supporter of President Erdogan's ruling party, as can be seen on the picture on his Twitter feed. Human Rights Watch has condemned the appointment then of the government-controlled trustees now to run Zaman, calling it a veiled move by the president to eradicate opposition media. Amnesty International has also criticised the decision and is now demanding greater involvement from other countries to promote freedom of press. This is the latest episode in the long-standing attacks on media freedom and freedom of expression in general in Turkey. The rights and freedoms that are being attacked in, in Turkey must receive uh, an adequate and appropriate and very strong response from the international community. There is some response and, you know, th those, are, those are to be welcomed. Of course, um, there is always more that can be said and, and stronger criticism can be levelled at Turkey. In the past, the Turkish Prime Minister had reacted angrily to suggestions that there's no press freedom in the country, claiming that no one has been imprisoned or uh, for journalistic activities, although here are some of the pressures that reporters have been under.
Some examples there, and another for you now. Let's speak live to Frederic Gerdig, a journalist who was deported from Turkey last year. She's live with us on the line. Hi, Frederic. Thanks for being with us. We're going to talk about your thoughts you. about uh, what appears to be uh, happening right now. But let's just wind the clock back a minute. Tell us about your story. Why were you deported from Turkey last year? Um, first, I was uh, prosecuted for making propaganda for a terrorist organization. I was acquitted. But then later in September, I, I was, I was uh, detained while carrying out my work in the southeast of Turkey, where I was based. Um, and three days later, I was uh, on the plane to Amsterdam, and now I have an entry ban. I cannot go back to Turkey. Well, there is that saying, no smoke without fire. What were you doing? I was making a report um, about a human shield group who tried to stop the fighting between the, the PKK, the Kurdish PKK and the, and the Turkish army. And, and then they caught me and they said I was supporting the group, but I was just making a story about them. So as far as you're concerned, they had no grounds to deport you. What they were saying was, was not true, yeah? No, everybody, and you see it now with, with Saman and today Saman too, everybody who, who opposes them, every journalist who's against the government is being framed. I was framed as a terrorist supporter and um, Zaman is linked to the Gulen movement, which is a movement of a religious uh, Turkish leader who is based in the US. And they say he's trying to, um, to stage a coup against the government. So now the, the Zaman journalists and the people who read Zaman are being framed as coup supporters. So that's, that's how the government is doing it. So let me get this straight. Just to have a difference of opinion with the government there, it looks likely that you'll be labelled as, as, as a terrorist supporter, yeah? Yes, that's true, but it's not something new. It's, it's kind of a thing that people now think that Erdogan invented the lack of press freedom in Turkey, which is totally not true. Um, he takes it to extreme heights. That's definitely true. But the press has never been free in Turkey. Like 20 years ago, nobody could go for, to the southeast, for example, to report um, on the realities there. And at the time, it was the army that was censoring the press. And now it's Erdogan using the same mechanisms in the state to silence opponents. You're going to be watching very closely what's been happening at that newspaper over the last 24 hours. Briefly, your thoughts on it. Well, it's not a surprise at all. Um, one of the, of several of the, the government newspapers have in the last couple of weeks hinted at this already. And other uh, media who are linked to this Gulen movement have, have come to the same procedure with trustees like Bugün and Kanal Yedi. Um, so it's not something new. It was sort of announced in the government papers. And I talked to one of the columnists and, and, the, and the previous editor-in-chief, Bülent Kanesh, a couple of weeks ago. And he said, we're already having a difficult time because of the pressure the government is putting on us. We're losing advertisers, we're losing readers, because, for example, if you work for the state, you cannot be seen with someone under your arm because it can lead to losing your job. So there was a lot of pressure already. Someone was being attacked for months already. And now this is the, yeah, this was kind of the outcome that everybody expected, but it's really if you see the tear gas and if you see how the police is now shutting down all the the email accounts of the people who work for Zaman, it's it's really uh, terrible mm. i have to say it's interesting to see as well we've been telling our viewers that cnn turk cnn a well-respected name cnn turk criticized for not covering this at all anything that's happened in Zaman newspaper in fact as about to show our viewers uh, it's run today when all this has been kicking off outside those offices and tear gas everywhere with a speech by Erdogan, a report on weight loss and, and a book presentation are you surprised by that no i'm not surprised at all it was C cnn turkey said isn't it the connection was a little bit flawed there um mm. th there's yeah, CNN another Turk, problem yeah, yeah. Um, CNN Turk cancelled two uh, rather popular talk shows of people who are um, not really in line with the government. And, and that is another problem in Turkey, that most of the big papers and the big channels, also the ones we call mainstream and not necessarily like totally mouthpieces of the government, they, are, they have economic ties to the government because they are part of big, um, big companies. So they have to report in line with with the in general government policy if not these companies lose contracts in the telecom markets in the construction market so they are really the papers are 80 percent let's say under the control of the government and and now even more with someone because someone was a is a big paper frederick thank you for your time frederick gerding journalist who was deported from turkey last year thank you for being on art thank international you. live
Well, RT has been hearing what uh, Turkey's ally, the US, has had to say about what's happened at Zaman and the takeover. Uh, this is what was said in the State Department briefing about it. Can you condemn the Turkish court decision to replace the entire management and editorial board of Feza Media Group? Uh, we see this as the latest in a series of troubling judicial and law enforcement actions taken by the Turkish government targeting media outlets and others critical of it. We call on the Turkish government to ensure full respect for due process and equal treatment under the law. Uh, court ordered supervision of a media company's finances and operations should not prompt changes to the newsroom or editorial policy. We sounded out some human rights activists on that who told us that America's stance is just as worrying as the actual crackdown by Ankara. I think there needs to be a consistent, loud voice coming from the, uh, the, the, the nations that pretend to be the upholders of democracy and human rights. But the, the real troubling aspect of this is that uh, Western nations have allowed uh, Turkey uh, the Saudis uh, and for, for themselves to operate above international law. We see that even the U.S. government uh, says that they are quote-unquote troubled by what happened in Turkey.